If you're a real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show is for you. Learn secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field who will guide you on your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so you can take your commissions and turn them into cash flow. Here's your host, Randall. Let's dive in. Hey, great to have you on today. I'm excited to talk to you about something near and dear to everybody's heart. It's taxes. Taxes are so exciting. Um, Today, uh, or just this past week, we got our cost seg study estimate done. So we don't actually have the the study done yet, but we had two different firms look at this property that we're buying. And what you do is you get a cost segregation study done on it. We've done a number of episodes on, on what a cost segregation is. I'll high level it right now. Um, essentially, they're going through and they're looking at anything at the property that can be depreciated on accelerated scale. So when you when you do cost segregation, you have um, you're you're compressing the time frame on some of the items that you can depreciate. You can do five year, fifteen year, and twenty seven year. Um, and so what what's happening when you run the cost segregation study? Normal depreciation could be over a twenty seven and a half year period. And so year one in this scenario of our property. Uh, we'd only be getting depreciation of about $29,000. When you run the cost segregation analysis and you see that a lot of that stuff is personal property and that can be depreciated over a much shorter time frame because it's going to depreciate faster. And you layer on this current tax uh, advantage that we have of 60% bonus depreciation. We can get our depreciation in year one all the way up to uh, about $180,000 to $190,000 that we can write off. And the way that's beneficial to us as the operator is um, we are active real estate professionals. So we can take all of that depreciation and apply it to our active income, any income that we have to reduce our tax liability. And so that's a that's a, a loss that we can put on our books, right? If we have investors that come on with us, same thing. We can allocate that depreciation. And as an investor, you get some of that depreciation and you could use it to write off. If you're a real estate professional, you can use it to write off 100% of other income. If you are a non-real estate professional and talk to your CPA, I'm not a CPA. This is all going to be driven by a CPA. But if you're a non-real estate professional, you can use it against passive income that you have earned uh, or passive gains. And so like if you invest in stocks, trade stocks, do whatever it is, um, or you're getting interest income from loans you've created, anything like that. Those are all passive. They're coming into you and you can use this depreciation to write off those those gains. Interesting thing about this as well is it carries forward year over year, sits on your books. So if you only use, say it's $200,000 depreciation that we get from this property, if we don't use all of that against income this year, then we can carry that forward to the following year or however many years you have it on your books. So if you go out and you're buying one, two, three, four of these properties every year, you're using your own money. I mean, you could build up a pretty quick book of losses that you can carry forward for years to come. And so that's one of the reasons we love buying real estate because you get the tax benefit of owning the real estate. And as an investor in some of these deals, if you're a limited partner or if you are a joint venture partner in these things and you have no active management role, you can still get those depreciation losses on your books as well. So anyway, I was just uh, wanted to share this with you guys because the purchase alone gets us about $200,000 of depreciation. If you go and you include the any CapEx items that you are buying, if, if you have to get new uh, refrigerators, uh, stoves, uh, personal property items like that, we have all, all window units in this property, it's all personal property. All of those things are going to be depreciated a lot faster. And so you're uh, depreciation in year one, if you're going to spend all that money in year one, is going to go up. So um, just to clarify, when you have a CapEx budget that you are going to spend on the property, that's also most of it's going to be depreciation that you can use and take take advantage of very quickly because you're, you're spending the money up front. So those new items that are going to go in, you're going to get some of that depreciation up front. It's not going to be massive against the, the actual purchase of the property. And so you can get two different schedules. You can get a property specific cost segregation study done, right? As it is today. And then you get another one done that includes any of the new items that you're going to be putting into the property. Um, so you just have to think about if that's going to make sense for you. It's a little extra cost to, to do that. And it doesn't really, I'm looking at it now. Um, it looks like with the cost seg uh, bonus depreciation, let me look at this schedule. 
Um, in year one, you get seventy nine thousand dollars of depreciation, and then without the cost seg, it's seventy five. So it really doesn't move the needle much. It's it's a four thousand dollar change, but uh, it costs about you know half of that to get just this study done. So anyway, something to think about in in numbers to review whenever you're going through and taking a look at it. The bonus depreciation, if it goes back to 100%, which there's some legislation through going through Congress, I believe right now, uh, advocating for um, 100% bonus depreciation coming up. And so if that happens, then these numbers will look even better and you get more of that depreciation up front. Again, this is not tax advice. Talk to your CPA how this would affect you and your taxes whenever you are looking at either a syndication or a fund and they're offering this type of advantage. Whenever you're going and buying a property, you can get one of these studies done up front and you can look at your PPM, the private placement memorandum that the sponsor has provided to see how much you are likely to get in depreciation for your investment. So again, all those things, just keep those in mind whenever you're looking at these deals. I just want to share exactly what we're looking at on this specific deal so that it, it you know, again, if you're looking at something like this, um, a property of any size that you can do a cost segregation study on just to help you understand what it is that that we're looking at. I've got two different bids, two different um, cost seg companies that have looked at it. I suggest you do the same, shop around, kind of figure out what the price points are for these um, for these types of studies and um, and then take advantage of them for sure. So Again, if if you're enjoying the content that we're putting out, the guests that we're bringing on, please go on, rate and review. You can check out the live shows on um, on YouTube. If you're listening to it on podcast, anywhere you listen to it, please just rate and then give us a quick one word review. Even just one word just helps us out a ton with the reach and that gets better guests on the show. All right, guys, enjoy. We'll catch you on the next episode. Surprisingly, most of the agents we speak with got into real estate hoping to gain passive income and become work optional. However, only one in five ever start investing. Most are simply too afraid to start. Once you get educated by listening to this show, you'll be able to overcome that fear and become the one in five who are finding financial freedom. Don't miss a single episode. If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. And we'll catch you on the next episode.